Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. I really enjoyed doing my uh, piece yesterday, this reverse out white on dark glossy scene. And uh, I enjoy doing all my scenes. I really, is, I especially like seeing something new uh, that I haven't seen before or that, I don't know, it just kind of, you're discovering something uh, like a twist on some existing techniques that will really lend itself to, um, I don't know, kind of so further, I don't know what you would call it, expansion of your um, frame of stamping reference, I guess you can say. Uh, you know, when you can really learn new techniques that you can incorporate in with uh, uh, different media, different images, um, etc. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to try these, uh, this composition on three different colored um, foils here, okay? I stamped it on some glossy cardstock, but I thought, you know, that might look pretty good with some colored foil. So this one is a gold foil, okay? And I'm using the Brilliance Moonlight White. It will dry on foils, no problem, um, non-porous types of surfaces. If you're not using something like this, what you can do is you can emboss the things that I'm adding on here. You can stamp everything out and just emboss it in white if you want to. Or, or clear emboss. If you're stamping it in a white embossing powder, then probably use a um, an extra fine type of uh, uh, embossing powder. Okay. All right, so that looks pretty good on gold. It's not too bad. It really gives a pretty good impression. I, I was kind of surprised at um, the uh, just the amount of detail that, I don't know, this pigment ink um, has. Okay, now this is my recollections foil, okay? This one is out of the jewel-toned pack, okay? Um, Multi-toned pack. And it's, you know, as you can see, the, uh, I don't know, what is that? Fuchsia violet? I don't know, something like that. But what I've done on this, because I've experimented on this before. This is some really cheap foil, okay? You're talking about 25 full-size sheets. This is, you know, like a close to a half size. I have all the dimensions of everything I'm doing in the um, um, in the notation description below all my uh, videos if you need ever need that. But, okay, so this is some really cheap foil. And what I've found in the past is when I stamp the um, white pigment ink over the top of it, the foil, I don't know it, what it does, I don't know if it's water-based foil dye on top of here in terms of the colors or whatnot, but it tends to bleed into the white, okay? Um, I don't know, it might be happening here. I don't know, maybe less so. But I, I, I swore that when I added any type of white, it really kind of... Um, whatever color I was doing that uh, the impressions over or applying with a cotton ball for clouds or something like that. I, I felt that it really bled through, okay? So what I did was on this foil, just before I stamped it, I forgot to do these other uh, bows here, lower, which I'll do right now. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I felt that it was bleeding through too much. So this time what I did was I applied a spray it, uh, coating sealant in the form of a workable fixative, okay? And that's, it's basically um, a matte sealant, okay? Um, it's probably a little different than the sealant. It's probably a thinner spray. Um, but I did that on the uh, the Recollections one. This gold foil, you don't need to do it. This is like a per perfectly sealed off foil surface. You don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, but the Recollections one, you do. Now, th these foils, the gold one's really cheap too, but you have to buy 60. It comes in a 60 pack for like $70, uh, $17 if it's still the same price. It might be $18, I don't know. Some of their packs are... Um, lower in price than others. You can check that online. When I provide the links for all these types of things, it's just kind of meant as more of a starting point. 
what I do is I try to find I try to find what I'm looking for and the cheapest price possible and then I'm you know kind of to expedite people's kind of search process I just kind of list it down below but you can kind of shop around for these types of things I don't know the gold one I found like I said it was like way cheaper per sheet though I mean there might be packs where there's like five sheets in there or something like that but you're just paying so much more per sheet okay now the recollections one I really love because they're it's at Michael's on the shelves at my play yeah, my Michael's at least some people say theirs are really really picked over a lot of the shelves at my local Michael's are picked over but the foils I don't know when I was in there our local one had tons of it and you can also buy it online too okay I find it as I don't know if it's still this price but it was as cheap as like three dollars and thirty three cents I know that just by heart because it came up a couple times over the course of a, I don't know, like a five, six month period. Um, but it's usually like buy one, get one at 50% off. Well, these packs are like $6 for 25 full size sheets. Sometimes you see these types of things being sold for like a dollar a sheet, a five pack or something like that online. But um, these ones are cheap, okay. But I did find some bleed through. These ones are looking pretty good though. Now, it's not perfectly opaque white, but I think there was more bleed through before um, when I didn't seal these off. Now, I mean, it could dry and we can get more of that going, but, um, you know, that bleeding through, but um, we'll see. Usually, I think I saw it by now. Um, so these are looking pretty good. Okay, now the Brilliant Zinc is just a water-based ink, so I'm just cleaning off with water. Okay. I like to clean off with my stamps and everything like that with as least harsh a uh, cleanser, cleansing agent as possible. So when you're working with water-based media, water should be sufficient to do the cleaning in most cases, okay? All right, this might not be, I, I should probably just do all of these um, at the set, complete, um, the scenes one at a time, but I, I think it's just going to be easier for me to go and do these just one by one here, kind of in a, not one by one, but, uh, um, image by image in a, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, assembly line, <laughs> assembly line style. Okay, so I went with bows on the uh, left side. Now let's put this one on the upper right here, okay? All right, so applying down. If, you know, these compositions come out slightly different, then so be it, who cares? Okay, now what I'm finding in real super porous surface, I mean, uh, non-porous surfaces with a thick ink, okay? I.e. foil with pigment inks. Pigment inks are almost like paint. Sometimes in the more solid of areas, there's this kind of vacuum that takes place, so you don't get a really good coverage in the vac um, well, solid areas. So let me see if I got it this time. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. See, so, you know, my pine cones are real kind of a, like a solid area where the... The needles are just more of a thinner thing, but see right in there. Just kind of watch out for those types of things. If you're doing this on, you know, like a dye-based inks on matte cardstock, you don't need to worry about that at all. But there are certain um, types of dynamics that occur that are a little bit different than when we're stamping on a very porous surface with pigment ink or whatever type of ink, dye-based inks, alcohol inks, etc. Than a very non-porous with a very thick style of ink okay um sometimes we have to deal with those types of things you know but you just you know you just kind of adjust accordingly like right right now for me i'm holding this down and allowing the ink to kind of set up a little bit longer you don't have to press hard that's not going to do it we need that ink to transfer we don't want it to kind of smush out on around the sides and that's what can happen if you press too hard um with you know a thick pigment ink okay but i mean it's not you just it's not like a huge kind of technique change or anything like that. It's not 
kind of a learned process, you just hold it down a little bit longer, okay? Um, if you don't get some of that stamping out like I did, what happened to me yesterday, um, all you do is just fill it in with a little Q-tip with a, some pigment ink on it, kind of after the fact, okay? All right, adding this down, this is a color that I never would have used in the past, kind of this fuchsia purple kind of foil glittery, to, you know, not glittery, but uh, reflective surface here, but I, I love all these uh, foils. Even the the ones that I really didn't think I'd use too much of were the um, primary colors, just the straight red and green, but um, those work fantastic for, um, oh, things like uh, Christmas types of uh, cards or uh, ornaments. You can you make ornaments out of it. Um, you can stamp on them, emboss on them. I don't know. It really makes for a pretty fun dynamic surface, no matter what color of that uh, reflective medium. All right, so that is it with the bows, all right? Even on these, you know, half-page kind of slimline cards, that fills in quite a bit of area, so it really takes out <laughs> a lot of the, uh, I don't know, I guess it's not busy work because it's, you know, a very integrated, integral element within the scene, you know, these foregrounds right here. But I used to have, you know, I used to put, you know, a pretty good amount of uh, surrounding um, border tone in my pieces, okay? But now you got the framing being done by images, so you just stamp them out, and your framing kind of work is done because there are, you know, again, they're, they're fairly dynamic and, and large. Okay, so... Let's go in with this uh, snowy covered bridge. Normally I wouldn't do this type of thing where I'm doing the exact same scene again. I mean, I'm, I might alter this a little bit. I might add some light beams or rays to one of these just to kind of mix it up. But I'm really curious to see, um, I don't know, just some different looks here. Okay, now my... Um, Card dimensions are a little bit different than the one I did yesterday, okay? That's a little bit higher, okay? So, um, that's going to change slightly, okay? Again, this is the snowy covered bridge. And we can alter things, too. We can do things, these could have been in black, or uh, this could be in black right here, but I don't know. Let's just go with this and just keep things really simple right now. It's pretty cool on that. I'm seeing some color um, differences for the first time. I, I don't know if I've done white over that fuchsia violet before. I don't know. What is that? I don't know if it's violet, but... Um, okay, let's see. This is one of my favorite colors here, this blue um, in the Recollections packs. Okay, so coming around. Do you love that kind of super reflective surface? I think it's really cool. And this mirrored one, um, I'm wondering if that was the one that started it all. No, I think it was the uh, Star Dream Lapis Lazuli that I started my um, reflective, kind of iridescent types of uh, usages of uh, stamps. Because I've always had that lapis lazuli. I didn't, I don't think I, I don't know if I had anything quite so reflective as, you know, like this gold foil or silver foil. I might have, I don't remember, um, but I don't think so. In fact, I think I was looking for some more lapis lazuli or the Star Dream types of papers, and I just looked online. I think I wrote metallic cardstock, and uh, some of these types of uh, papers came up. All right, that is it with the, um, the covered bridges. We're moving along. Yeah, it's about half of the uh, thing. I mean, we'd, we'd really be done almost with the entire composition if I was just doing one. This does not take that long here. It's a very fast process because we're not going to be doing too much after the impressions are being uh, are made. All right, 
so that is that. I found a really good use for my uh, fence. I mean, there's a lot of uses for these fences already, but I just used the top half of uh, one of the foreground ones right here. Foreground meaning just, you know, it's a larger scale one right here. All right, but I just used kind of the top area of it. All right. Now this one, I'm going to ink up more than I think I'm going to need because I know this is a larger, um, it's a higher card than my other ones, so I might have to use a little bit more of that coming up this way. Okay. But we'll just go like about like so here. Okay. And again, now this one's a pretty solid image, okay? So kind of hold it down a little bit longer. Like I said, if, I mean, if you're embossing these, then you don't need to worry about any of this. Okay, and there's our fence. It's kind of cool and white here, here. Now, I could extend this fence over this way, too, but I don't think I really need to. All right, be careful on these. Now, this is a, it's a quick drying ink. But on foil, it's not super quick drying or anything like that, so we'll have to heat set it, I think, to be completely effective. Okay, now this one I stamped my um, covered bridge quite a bit lower, so I won't use quite as much of this fence here. I might have dragged my fence a little bit, just slightly. Sometimes, uh, you know, when you're stamping this, it's really thick ink. Eh, not too bad if any. Um, sometimes you can feel it kind of slide a little bit, so when you make contact, try to make it contact and not move it around at all. Okay, so just a smaller portion of that fence right there. Still reads pretty good as a fence though, just having those um, posts coming up from below the horizon line. Alright, and one more here. I want this one to be a little bit more prominent, so coming up a little bit higher. All right. All right. No special cleansing fluid or anything like that needed. Again, the Brilliant Sinks are water-based ink. All right, let's see. That is that. All right, so let's extend our fence a little bit. I have both right and left sides. There's near and far um, fences. There's kind of medium depth fences. All right, now on this one, you know, we'll add in a couple extra fence posts so that things kind of match up a little bit more. Uh, seamlessly, I guess you could say. Okay. Right here. And our gold. It'd be kind of interesting to do some of these um, scenes. Maybe not necessarily this one, but you can do three identical ones and kind of um, present them uh, together as a triptych or. You can think of it like a like Andy Warhol type of thing, you know, with the three different, you know, four different versions of something, or a face, or whatever it was, nine different versions. Okay, so there we have that. All right. Now, let's add in some of this extra um, texturing here. Let's get some stuff out of the way here. Okay. Now, some of the, your foils are a little bit bowed, so just kind of punch them down. That way, when you're pressing on here, we're not kind of pressing down like paper like that, where it could kind of skew, okay? So we want this nice and flat. And just with a light touch. Yep, 
you can utilize your drier impressions, okay, to get um, lighter impressions. All right, so that just kind of filled that area out. Look at that in the different impressions. It almost looks like gold impressions, but it's because it's a really light, dry impression of the white. Okay, and see this where it kind of transitions out that way. Let's hit a couple light, even lighter ones like this. Okay. See that? How it tra transitions out from that? And in here, we have a varied surface like that. It's kind of cool on that gold, huh? That super reflective mirrored surface. It's, it's always kind of interesting um, to see that like that. All right, here it is on this one. So it really fills that area out. Just one more impression, oh, two more impressions. I forgot about the quote stamp, but you know, this these three pieces are almost done. Oh, well, if I want to add some crystals, boy, those crystals look good on here too, or on at least yesterday's scene. Maybe I'll add them. The thing that takes a while with those crystals is my glue thing. You know, I don't know. I need to get a better glue thing where I can just put dot, 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 dot. That'll go up really fast. All right. Uh, quote stamp. Reason and faith. That one's a good one. It really fits in that area perfectly. Um, sometimes I'm still kind of questioning whether or not I should do... Um, um, the quote first, the word stamp first, or second. I, I think, now that I think about it, I'm thinking the quote, the word stamp should go first because then I, I can really control how much spatter goes down there. If there's too much, it's hard to tell how the quote stamp will work around it. What you don't want, now this, this quote stamp right here is, are all caps, okay? And, um, I forgot about my tree. Uh, let's do that after. These are all caps, but what you don't you won't want to go upper and lowercase and then splatter paint something, and that looks like you have a bunch of extra dotted areas. You know, you want those dots to be for your dotted I's, J's, whatever. Okay, you don't want a bunch of extra dots. You know, amongst um, a varied um, alphabet. All right, trying to keep it straight. I'm not positioning or anything like that. You could, or if this comes out totally crooked, you can just wipe it off. It doesn't really stick until um, you heat set it, uh, on the foils at least. You can heat set on the, uh, the gold foil though. That's very, very smooth and um, coated and it'll wipe right off. I mean, you kind of buff it off and uh, start over again if you need to. Just re-stamp if you need to. Okay. All right. Gosh, I really love these quote stamps in the mirror cards that I was doing. Having that word stamp on the surface, kind of floating on the surface of um, what's supposed to represent water, is really, really dynamic, and uh, it really gives a lot of dimension to the piece. All right, I'm getting a little bit better at stamping this, you know, especially if the uh, foil's a little bit curled like that, and you have to kind of press it down a little bit. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm being a little bit more... Uh, kind of uh, um, definitive, I don't know, definitive? Is that the word? I don't know, but um, I'm not hesitating um, when doing that. Okay, so let's take a look at these pieces. Is that right there? 
they all have kind of their own look to them, don't they? It, it's like a, its own kind of feel. Um, just through the uh, the different color schemes. Okay, so one more stamp impression with the pine row should do it. Okay. All right. Looks like I didn't clean this off too well from yesterday. Not that I even need to, but... All right, I'm gonna wipe off the bottom, okay, a little bit. So it's going from kind of wet to dry and lighter to darker down here. Seems like strange when you're taking off ink and saying it's going to be darker, but it nevertheless is because we're working in the opposite of like a colored ink and it's, you know, it's white. All right, so there's that. Wet, medium, dry, okay? And let's go around right here. I'm being careful not to. The, the, the big thing is you don't want to stamp over your um, words. Words, you, you have to have them clear, okay? I mean, I can have a few little snowy dots on it. I don't think any problem, but you don't want um, imagery running into it, okay? All right, there's my transitioning. See how much whiter it is up top and lighter down below? That's because we had the fence down here, and I wanted that to remain nice and visible. Okay. You can almost go with a second impression of this over here and maybe get a lighter, you know, impression of the trees in there. It might look a little bit busy. I don't know. I mean, now's the time to experiment, right? But <laughs> I, I like these bees as I don't want to, I want to leave them kind of as, as let's, let's, let's compare with the other um, dark blue one from yesterday with these. Okay, so removing out. One of the things about this is that you have to kind of, what I've learned over time is you have to kind of be fairly bold. Don't, don't remove all the ink, but a lot of times I didn't remove enough, okay? So really move it down here. I'm making a lot of um, passes. And then up here, just kind of use um, less of a pressure when you're wiping it so that you're just kind of dragging across there a little bit, okay? All right, now this one's going to really benefit. I mean, the other one did. They all benefit, but this one is uh, darker blue so the white will show up more by contrast on this one so it'll have a stronger look to it and hopefully we got that nice transition there okay see i want that bottom part to be showing but um you don't want it to be wiped clear off do you see that and then you get the benefit of you know some of those tree formations down there but you get the benefit of having that fence show up nice and distinct by contrast against there if i had if i if that fence was going up against white a white background of trees we wouldn't be able to see it so much so this is an easy process right here it's certainly an easy technique but you just got to get used to it a little bit i mean you can see it right on the rubber too okay you can see where it's getting darker there because the you know the rubber from the uh of the image is showing through okay now i'll wipe down here i'm wiping it off so you go Kind of up and then go back down again. It's not like wiping up there like that. No, I can't do this again down here. You certainly could. All right, and just passing it off. Now I'm being careful not to stamp into my um, covered bridge, but you know, anywhere over here on the side would have been fine for the, these trees. Okay, and I, I, I'm going down below into like clear down in there because I don't need to worry about it because I've wiped off so much ink. And there we have that transitioning tone. And there's that fence standing out really nicely in front of it, okay? Because you've just simply wiped some off of that. All right, I think that is it as far as our impressions go. Now let's get into um, some fun here with the splatter painting. Um, as I say that, I'm kind of going through in my mind if we should do um, some heat setting now, and then splatter paint. Why not just do it after we um, splatter paint it all, okay? Dr. Martin Bleed Proof White. I just mixed this yesterday. I shouldn't have to do it again, but 
Most of the times you have to do it pretty frequently, okay? And I'm going to load up just the tip of this, okay? And it's about maybe a quarter inch max into that. And then I'm really wiping off a lot of that paint back into the bottle. Okay. Because I want to avoid any type of um, um, big, huge drops of paint or something like that. So sometimes I keep kind of off. See, I'm kind of lined up over here first. So that when I first start doing this, and when I get the most amount of coverage splattering happening, uh, there's not really a danger of me going into the scene. Okay, now turn accordingly, okay? Just turn it in whatever direction is going to be the most conducive for that application of media in whatever targeted area you're applying it in, okay? All right. All right, now I can kind of see, too, what size the uh, dots are being created by this. Now I'm going over right over my piece. Oops, I got a big blob. That looks okay because it's right down in there. <clears throat> but you kind of get a feel for it. Sometimes you get kind of thicker um, splatters because maybe the paint is thicker or thinner. I'm not, I don't know what it is. Maybe you use a different brush or something like that, and the bristle um, are different. But all right, there's the splatter painting on this one. Could be snow, could be stars, could be both, okay? But look at that, it really fills in this whole area, doesn't it? I think it kind of unifies things, too. All right, now the blue one, that's going to have the most amount of contrast. I think I need to get some more paint on here. Maybe I'll get a little bit less because there's already some in there, too, okay? And starting off the page, splattering onto the page, Sometimes it's splattering, it seems like it's splattering in a different direction. Like sometimes it feels like the opposite. I don't know why. Or it is splattering in the opposite direction. So I'm going this way and it's like, oh, it's splattering over here instead. So you just kind of test it out, you know. It's not like a leap of faith or anything. You test it out and see which way it's splattering and then you just accordingly... All right, that is that. Just not not too much. I mean, it's really fine. This is what the where the bleed proof right really comes into play. Those even those tiniest of little dots really stand out in a very opaque way. I mean, they're dark because they're super tiny, but they are opaque. All right, and the gold. Okay, let's see if I have enough paint on here. I think I do. Boy, that really stands out on this one. I don't know if it stands out more on the gold or the dark blue. I would have thought the dark blue because of the amount of contrast, but this one, this gold foil is super, super reflective. It's very, it's like chromed, you know, except gold. The silver one's definitely like chrome. It's the most mirrored, um, it's the most mirrored foil that I, I've seen. All right, there we have it. It's a really kind of a unifying element of these scenes to have that texture in there. All right, you get that look on your thumb where it is a badge of honor, but it just wipes right off. It cleans right off. You don't have to use like some kind of special cr scrubbing type of thing to get that off of your Fingers and thumbs, now if you're using a gesso or something like that, or a, I don't know, a different type of white paint. I don't know. Bleed proof white comes right off. Okay, so um, let's take a, an acrylic white paint pen, and let's get those varied scale dots in here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, drawing in some larger dots, okay? Just to get that variation in here. Everything is all kind of the same scale, sorry. <laughs> I hope you can see this, but uh, it's so reflective. It's hard to get a really good photo of 
foil pieces too. Everyone always mentions that that does it because you you know you're catching yourself in the reflection sometimes. And right now, you know, this foil is probably showing the uh, my camera that I'm shooting this video on above. Okay, but hopefully you can see these larger dots in here. I'm going for some scale. It could be snowfall and. Um, these larger dots are closer to us. All right, well, that is that. Okay, so this is what the those larger dots bring. It it's a lot of scale. Um, to the piece. A scale to the piece just in the form of dots, you know, the kind of the most insignificant little um, element of this scene. I mean, it really becomes a prominent visual, or at least an equal visual to a lot of things that are already happening in here. Oh, I forgot to, let me add a, an extra little fence post in here. Okay. Okay, that is that. And one more. This one, it, it looks really kind of dusted, okay, with a lot of really fine dots of the uh, that spray pattern okay so the um the scale the added scale of these larger dots in here i think are really adding to this one um, quite significantly so kind of come in here kind of go in between your uh, tree bows your foreground images and kind of group some sometime okay um I think that looks better than just having an equal kind of distance in between uh, this type of background patterning. I guess this could be foreground too if it's like a, you know, little flakes of snow falling. All right. It's pretty cool in the purple, not something that we're stamping on very often. Not the hue of purple, but also not the type of surface in terms of foil of purple, okay? That's what that looks like. Look at that. Look how dark that looks like that. Then you turn it up and it's purple <laughs> and whatnot. It's kind of cool. All right. So let's take another piece right here. And then the, um, the foils and... Uh, Crystals really go well together, so I'll add something like that in here. I think this, some little clear crystals, I mean, I just think that would be so um, an elegant and dynamic. Okay, so I'm going to let these dry a little bit, and then we'll come back. I can heat set these instantly. It takes like a few seconds, but I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go wash my hands and such and let this um, kind of just air dry. Okay, applying uh, tape on the back of my pieces. They are all dry. They just air dried in about, I don't know, a few hours. Um, no problem. Hitting all of these up. Okay. Now you don't need to see this process right here, but I'm going to give them all a very thin border, okay? So we'll go for, let me see, let me take this out so you can see what's going on here. 
Okay, and I am just eyeballing this. I'm going to give it a really thin border. And I want to make it so that I don't have to do any kind of additional trim. I don't have to trim all four sides, so I just want to get it correct on uh, two sides. So I just need to trim off this part. Let me see if I can get... No, <laughs> I'm going to have to do separate pieces on all of these. It's a good idea to kind of brayer this just to get it really flat. I mean, you can just put a piece of paper over it and kind of just hand do it yourself as well. Um, let's see. What I mean by that is you can just take something like this and just go like that. I mean, that's that's adequate. This tape is sticky enough. I mean, if you're not going to, you know, if your tape isn't very sticky, then maybe brayer. If you have a brayer, it just kind of gives it a little bit more, <laughs> oops, a flat, oops, oh my gosh. Look at me. I put this all down here. This is all going to, this is really sticky here. What a mess. Uh, bloopers, bloopers, uh, this will go in my bloopers video here. Oh my gosh. All right, so this right here is going to have to be re-taped, of course. But now, I double mat these anyways, so as long as it's not kind of destroyed on that side, we're cool here. All right, let's see here again. Wow. I do this all for you. <laughs> I wasn't even going to show this part. I was just going to go straight into uh, the uh, uh, matting, finished mat uh, portion of this, but no problem. Yeah, I'll show you what the brayer will do. Okay, so let's get this down here. All right. This one right here is going to necessitate, I think, the brayer, okay? I mean, it... I mean that's okay too. It's a little bit it's a little bit bumpy. So be it. Okay. Go like that. No worse for the wear. I'll be I'll be putting this on yet another piece, so that's a little bit rippled. Um Let's cut these all down. Let me do this off camera as well, and we'll get to, we'll figure out some, um, some good matting on this, or some, you know, I don't know, framing, mounting, whatever. Okay. Okay, we have three mounted uh, scenes. They look pretty good, I think, I'm just on this dark, glossy cardstock. I, mean, I probably could have come up with some better um, combinations for the colors, but, you know, this dark, glossy is a pretty decent neutral might have been good with a mat you know and just kind of let you know leaving the uh the reflective um type of quality just to the scene itself here's that one that got really bent up there but it looks pretty flat i don't see any uh, kind of noticeable um flaws or maybe it was the blue one uh, okay i take it back it was the blue one Okay, so see a couple little wrinkles right there. I could probably, I could probably work out a couple of these a little bit more, but not too bad upon, you know, just kind of initial inspection if someone was looking at this. <laughs> it got pretty bent, but when you look at it like that, you can see a little bit of warping. But let's take a look at it just in terms of the, uh, the quality of the, um, uh, the ink and surface combination. I, I think this foil, dark foil, looks really great um, in this type of composition and technique here. Uh, maybe it looks the best of all, I don't know. I, I don't know. It did, this one looks pretty good too. Um, this is the one I did yesterday. We, it, we still need to apply some crystals in here. Although I think it looks just fine as is, but you know those crystals really do put on this little extra bling in uh, into the compositions, which I think is really nice. Okay, so that is that. Um, here's this violet one like that that you just saw. I think that looks pretty cool too. It has kind of a feel of like a when you when you get this kind of reflective type of light in there. It to me it kind of takes on this little bit of a 
kind of aurora borealis type of um, look to it. It's not like a hanging curtain. I mean, it depends what you have kind of reflected in there. But if you just have any type of lighting reflected in there, you know, you could hold it up and there could be a window behind you or something like that. But that that edge right there to the light and how it just kind of bends like that. See, like that? Yeah, to, I don't know. It, it gives it that type of feel to me. Um, in terms of that color. Now let's take a look at the most maybe festive one with the gold. Super reflective. And see there's less kind of um, distortion. The more mirrored something is, the more kind of straightforward the reflections are going to be. Uh, I don't know, there's me, like a haunted version of me in the background, I think. Is that my face? I think so. <laughs> but see, you know, how much, this one's more of like a, oh, I don't know, not, not quite an iridescent or something like that, but um, kind of like more of a, like a brushed aluminum or something like that. This one's much more of a foil, so, but pretty cool. I don't know, are the images more crisp on the very, very um, sealed off mirrored foil, gold foil? You can see the white here. It's much more opaque and white, huh? This one right here has more of the, uh, the color kind of showing through it. It's much more of a subdued, you know, version, whereas this one seems to be more of a contrast. So, but I think this would have looked different had I not spray sealed. Okay, spray sealed pretty good um, with the uh, uh, Krylon spray fixative. All right, so I do believe that would have been uh, darker in terms of all the impressions, okay? And again, this is just uh, just to compare and contrast between these two. This one's so mirrored. I mean, if I hold it up in certain angles like that, this one does look like it's against black because it's reflecting probably my black vest that I'm wearing right now. But I don't know, very festive right here. All very different looks. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is let's... Uh, go off camera. You don't need to see this kind of boring little application here. I could speed it up too in terms of a time lapse. Let's get a little bit of a bling in here. We have all these crystals right here and I think I do have... Yeah, let's incorporate some of these. See, I have these amethyst ones and I think the amethyst ones with this and uh, the clear, okay. Um, and then I have some blue as well. So, eh, I don't know if this one actually matches up very well with that. That one's, yeah, it's a different blue. This is more of like a aquamarine or something like that. And this one's more of a, I don't know, like an ink uh, type of look. It has a little bit more of a reddish tinge to it. I don't think this one would match very well. Unless you want certain, you know, um, things to stand out. But, uh, okay, let me get to that, and we'll come back, and we'll take a look. All right, I have applied glue to all of these, well, three scenes here. Cards, whatever you call it. And I just found out I've been doing my glue wrong all along. I should have been using this little wax pencil, because this gets it exactly where I want it to go. I don't know, when I've been using that pushpin, it kind of leaves this dragging kind of, you know tail of a glue that can potentially kind of drag over. I don't know. I love figuring, finding out that I've been doing something wrong forever. I've been doing a ton of, you know, uh, uh, rhinestones, but over this last year I've been using them quite a bit um, for little embellishments. I really love them. And, uh, I don't know. Now I know how to use them. Okay. So let's get a bunch of these out here because I'm going to be applying a lot between the uh, three scenes. I've laid down a lot of, um, I don't know, what do you call them? Star dots, I guess. And we'll see if we can't get these applied in good order here. Okay. I have my trusty little um, gem picker. Jewel, jewel picker? I think it's a jewel picker called double-sided jewel picker, and this one's by uh, Uchida. Makes my life uh, my jewel applying life so much easier. 
to do. Okay. I have to kind of look at an angle to make sure, to see that I'm applying it in the right areas. Okay. I'm going to have to squish those down. Uh, these are what, one of those things that tends to pop off. Or a few of them. You might you lose a you know I don't know. You might lose a couple of them um, when you mail them off in transit. So push them down hard enough, and you know I mean I've laid down. I have enough of these down. So if a couple of them fall off, it's not really any big deal. So these little jewels are very inexpensive, so not a really big deal to as many as you want. They're in multiple sizes as well. Okay. So I try to vary it as much as I can. You can put a constellation down if you want to. It's going to be really cool to customize something if you're making like a birthday present or something like that. You kind of do little artistic type of things like um, I don't know, making a constellation there that's related to the recipient of your card. All right, uh, holding it at an angle here, seeing that I got everything. Okay, let's take a look at that. Look at those little jewels. Ah, I forgot to do the purple. Well, that's easy enough to do. Okay, let's take some more of this. And I'll just add it down here like so. Okay, I have some interspersed throughout that. I think I'm missing a couple down here. Missing a couple just in terms of the uh, the overall balance of the uh, the piece. All right, where did my where did my purple gems go? I, what happened to them? I cannot find what was right in front of me. Pausing video. Okay, of course it was right next to me. I, I was looking for this um, type of container here. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go with... I'll do a few in kind of a medium small size here. These little, um, these little gems, I think, are designed for, um, I don't know, I, in the little photographs, I see them used on uh, nails, like in a nail salon type of thing situation. Not just the purple ones, but, but all of them. Okay, so, all right. These ones are going to be more subtle, okay? They actually might look dark right there, okay? Those are the crystal ones right there, but see that? See the difference between like that one and these ones over here? It just gives it a different look, but of course that one's purple and violetish or whatever. See that one right there? Twinkling right there? That one's purple, so this is what it looks like close up. See that right there? And see how different it looks from these two over here, or three? So just, I don't know, just look at those little twinklies right there. I, that really does add quite a bit to, to the piece. I mean, it's the most reflective thing on the surface, so, I mean, it would stand to reason that it would be pretty um, eye-catching, especially in that type of light. Okay, now on this dark piece of foil, of course, okay, this is going to have even more contrast, even though that purple... Um, yeah, it had a decent amount of contrast too, but I think this one has even more contrast. So um, it is standing out by quite a bit. Okay, was this the one that got all folded up too? So kind of adding in these three-dimensional types of things too might kind of obscure, not that it really needs to, but uh, obscure those kind of those folds in my... Uh, you know, my foil surface here, uh, somewhat, and uh, kind of it pushes it back from a visual standpoint. So, 
You don't see these kind of little irregularities or imperfections quite as much anymore when you put something that's so much eye catch more eye catching right over the top of it, okay? So it's still there. It doesn't I'm not covering something up, but I'm just kind of um subduing the um uh the visual I don't know, kind of how apparent um, those types of things are or could be by burying it underneath something that's so much more eye-catching, okay? All right, so that is that. Yeah, oh, there's one more right there. I have this big glob of glue right there. Okay. I think when I first started using things like these crystals, I was being a little bit more conservative about it, just because I hadn't really done it before. I wasn't really into anything too... I don't know. Something that would stand out too much, but... These things make the perfect sense in a scene, because they're the ultimate um, kind of embellishment that represents reflected light, and that's so often what I'm trying to go for in scenes, okay? This is three-dimensional, of course, and it's, um, you know, they're mirrored, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I should have been doing it over the years. I often use just white, okay? I don't know, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's the illustrator in me, you know, having to use certain types of um, conve existing conventions because, you know, if you have, if you do it, original piece of artwork, you can't have like a crystal on there, okay? It's, that's not part of the printing process of having these three-dimensional crystals kind of coming out like that, but there's they are right there. Okay, see that right there? Look how fun they are. I mean, something like that too is fun to receive for your you know, whoever's getting your card, stuff like that, you know? I mean, who who wouldn't like getting, receiving something with that type of little um, kind of feature um, included <laughs> in their card? Right. I do love this look on the gold too. It is just there's something just so oh or maybe elegant about this type of um feature, visual, whatever you want to call it in a given piece. Okay. Some of my glue kind of dried a little bit while I was uh, doing the other two. Not too much. I just need to reiterate it a little bit more again to reestablish it. Okay. Okay, yeah, missing one right up there. Let's put a pretty good dollop right there. And then let's go for a decent size one. I 
I group a couple together here and there. I think it makes it look a little bit more. Oh, and I hesitate to use the word natural when we're creating a scene on foil with, you know, rhinestones. But um, just in terms of, uh, I don't know, we can call it, maybe it's not realism or something like that, but just in the name of variation. Okay, let's take a look here. Look how beautiful they just just the foil itself is the surface, you know, and how mirrored it is. Okay, but here's these little twinkly lights. Let's see if you can see it there. It's really hard to see it in this uh, type of uh, <laughs> situation. You can see it easier, I think, on the, uh, the dark blue foil. All right, let's see. Let's not lose our little crystals. Here's another one right here. Um, I do have some gold ones, but I don't think they look very good in um, this setting here. It's just, it's not kind of a reflective gold. It's more like a, oh, I don't know, maybe a, more of a, like a gold nugget gold or something like that. It's not mirrored. All right, so let's take a look at all of our pieces here in the final works. You just saw this one right here. Okay. See that there's variations of gold and white in here. So sometimes your pigment inks really don't apply as solid as they could. But it, then it gives you the variation. Okay, so we've wiped off the base of our pine trees. Look at that type of aspect to it as we go through these different pieces, okay? You can kind of decide on which one, I don't know, which one do you like the best here, just in terms of uh, the different incarnations. There's your foil right here. Kind of disregard those little ripples in it, but look at that. That almost looks like, that really looks like this in some ways, okay? But then you fold up like that, and you get that, blue throughout here you know that's what's good about the foil it's the the variations of light throughout it okay and let's take a look at the purple you know kind of the you know the one that you would kind of least think probably to stamp a scene on you know i don't know if people are thinking about stamping on gold either but just in terms of a stamping service but look at that i mean that really looks like i don't know that you know it's kind of that aurora borealis in the sky i think you know, when we show it like that. Look at those variations of kind of light and, I don't know, different values of purple like that. Okay, and there's those little twinkly lights again up there. Okay, and then let's go back to our, our original one. I don't know, you know, the one that's the least reflective in terms of a, kind of the actual surface. It's reflective in terms of the glossiness of it, but just a real basic one. The most amount of contrast for sure. Whitest looking whites though, isn't it? You know, so I don't know, very graphic and bold. And then these ones right here are just different incarnations of, I don't know if you call this subtle or if it's bold, okay, but the difference between a lot of the, uh, the white impressions and that gold in the background are, you know, it's not that different, especially with the, uh, the lighting on there like that. But you hold it like this, okay, and it's just as black as anything in the background. Okay, same thing here. Like that. And we have that. Easy to do. Very effective, I think. And again, these are just four different colors here. Um, there's all kinds of other colors. So, I mean, you can do like smaller pieces, like a half, a uh, quarter page piece in the same type of technique. It'd be kind of interesting if you did made them, you know, for Christmas cards or something of that sort, but then you had different colors going at different people. You have um, silver, gold, um, red, and green metallics. And I think that would give you a nice kind of varied palette and you can uh, mass produce them all in the exact same way. I think that takes a little bit more time. As if you're doing things like um, those little crystals on there, those took a little bit of time. 
But you remove that, and what you have is just a surface that all you need to do is stamp your impressions on in white ink, and then you splatter paint it with your um, white, um, bleed-proof white, if you're using that as your uh, substance. And I'd recommend it for all, because it's a really great medium, and it can really um, bring certain types of uh, surfaces to life with a lot of texture and um, light, because it's white. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.